We're going to wrap up our introductory lecture today with some discussion of the new issues or the issues that as public health professionals you are going to be facing in the course of your career. Right now, one of the biggest ones is storm water runoff. Remember that slide a few uh, programs back where I showed the industries all along the Gowanus Canal where they're free to dump their uh, garbage, waste products, coal tar into the canal? Well, the good news is that most of those factories now have a wastewater treatment system. Most of us are connected to a sewage treatment system. We don't dump big, there are no big pipes anymore that drain into our rivers and lakes and oceans that discharge untreated wastes. The bad news is that diffuse sources of pollution, so sources of pollution that arise just from living on the ground, are now the major challenge. So let's think about a typical yard. What kind of things can wash off this yard and into the storm when it rains, wash off this yard into the stormwater and out into the waterways? Well, pet wastes. Maybe we don't pick up after our dog. We, we apply fertilizer to our lawns. And if we put down too much fertilizer and it washes off, it can enter the waterways. If our car has a, if we have a driveway drip under our car leaking oil, that can flow into the waterways. Detergents. If we wash our car, wash our power wash our houses, these things can get onto our driveway and down into the waterways. Different kinds of chemicals like pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and of course litter can all wash into our storm drains and out into the waterways. St Stormwater runoff is now the major source of water pollution in the United States. It is the major challenge right now in terms of controlling water pollution. It is the major insult to our aquatic habitats and is a way that a lot of uh, toxic materials can enter the food chain and enter you and I. Another question that we're looking at right now, another major public health slash environmental health issue is asthma and air pollution. Even though we do have pollution controls on our factories, even though we have pollution controls on our power plants, we still have a lot of air pollution in a lot of places that is causing a lot of breathing difficulties. And air pollution and asthma, particularly among children, is a major public health, environmental health issue that you are going to be dealing with in the course of your careers. And of course, we have global climate change caused by greenhouse gas emissions. This is a map showing the projected greenhouse gas emission targets according to the Kyoto Protocol, which was negotiated and then later rejected. You see that the United States would have reduced its greenhouse gas emissions by a mere 7% under these protocols. But uh, in Germany and the United Kingdom, they would be reducing uh, their greenhouse gas emissions by up to 21%. Norway was even allowed to add, uh, increase their greenhouse gas emissions. Japan would be committed to reducing its greenhouse gas emissions 6% by 2012. Climate change is causing major disruptions to the world's ecosystems, endangering environmental health, which of course will have an impact on human health, particularly in terms of heat waves, in terms of invasive species, in terms of uh, the possibility of disease-carrying uh, insects. All these things will be 
a part of dealing with global climate change. And of course, we also have to figure out a way to protect environmental and human health in a world where the human population is uh, at least 7 billion. One, this map shows one dot is 50,000 persons. You can see the population density in the Indian subcontinent up through China and Japan along the eastern half of the United States down through Mexico on both coasts of South America and of course in Europe and sub-Saharan Africa. Learning how to deal with the large human population on Earth is going to be a big part of environmental health and human health in the coming decades. And one of the major issues that you, we are going to be confronting is understanding the role of epigenetics in environmental health. Epigenetics is the code of the DNA that tell the DNA how to reproduce. We are exposing this this diagram here. We're exposing the fetus to second to air, to cigarette smoke, but we can expose it through diet, toxins, and hormones, and document changing the way that the babies or the gen genes are going to be expressed. How this all works and what implications this has for human health in the coming years, in the face of environmental insults, is going to be a huge question. Now, just because um, I wanted to end this on a happy note, I'm showing a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge Swim. Remember, a hundred years ago, we had garbage barges being towed offshore and dumping garbage into, New York, uh, into the ocean, which will wash up into New York Harbor. Remember those trunk line sewers that discharged into the harbor without treatment? Well, now the East River, it's clean enough to swim. For, and here is a East River swimming race, the Brooklyn Bridge Challenge from the Brooklyn side to the Manhattan side. You see the swimmers in the water and the people on the kayak. So although we do have a number of challenges coming up, we, do, we have made a tremendous amount of progress, and there is a lot of reason to be optimistic. So that concludes our whirlwind introduction to environmental history in the United States. Hopefully we will not have snow in our next class, and we can meet to discuss some of these issues.